I, I, most of y'all know me, and y'all know I'm David Wetzel. I've been married to Debbie for 38 years. Rest her soul. She, she needs all the sympathy. She, she needs all the sympathy she can get. But as you know, I'm running for Senate seat 23. As of this today, I'm the only one on, legally on the ballot against Jay Cox. We don't know. If anybody else says that, we know about August 15th. Who else, is, if all these petition candidates are going to get up? And I'm not worried about that. But in, anyway, uh, I'm running on the contest that I read a very good article today, and I, I sent everybody that's on my email written by Chuck Baldwin that said the fear of God is not in this place. And he talked about how, you know, that, the, it, that you know, that uh, Jimmy Carter ran as a Baptist, all Baptists thought he was a good part of the legal vote for the Baptist. And everybody voted for uh, the first Catholic Kennedy Oh, all the Catholics said, we can vote for a Catholic president. And then when Bush, W. Bush ran, it's, we go get a born again Christian. So all born again Christians said they go that way. And now Mitt Romney is a uh, Mormon. And now all the Mormons said, we go get a Mormon president. But what Chuck Ball was saying, it don't matter what they are, it depends on where their heart is. And, and our forefathers, when they wrote the Constitution, they, they, they had in their hearts, they were different religions. Now, some were Baptist, some were Methodist, Presbyterian, whatever. But it didn't matter to them what religion they were. It what mattered to them if God was in their heart or not. Did they fear God? I, I think they feared God because that's why they did what they did. And now, the politicians don't fear, fear God. They don't even fear people. There's no difference between a Republican or a Democrat because the, they've elected liberals and it didn't work. They elected conservative Republicans and it didn't work. They all the same. They all keep doing the same thing. That is one of the reasons when I lived here in South Carolina, County Council, well, I know that the school board is not part of the county council. Every one of them is a Republican, and they act just like a just socialist Democrat. And and at the school board, they not part of They worse than socialists at the school board. And then you got the state house. They, they got a billion more dollars this year. What they do? Spend it just like a liberal Democrat. In Washington, it's even worse. They got Lindsey Graham who says he's a Republican and he's voting it for the lost treaty book where where we can let the UN come in here, you know. That there is no Republican or Democrat. I wrote somebody yesterday of the day. I said there's no difference between Republican and a Democrat. I said they ought to join up and change their name to the United States Socialist Party because there, there's no difference in that. Well, I used to belong to the Democrat for many years ago. I was a Republican. I even joined the Libertarian Party. I am now a member of the Constitution Party. I was a Republican, but I resigned as a Republican to be a Constitutionist, and I'm going to run as a Constitution. And if I'm elected, there's only two things that are going to control how I vote the Senate. One, if it's not in conflict with the Holy Bible, and two, if it's not in conflict with the Constitution of the United States. If it's in conflict with either one of them two things, I will vote against it. I don't care what it is, who called me, or whatever. When I run, I've decided I'm doing it for my state. I was born in South Carolina, and I'll always be a South Carolinian and a Southerner. I was born into it, and I have a heritage in it. And so I'm not, if I'm elected to the Senate, I will refuse to accept any salary at all and will not get into the retirement. I'm 
already retired and and I don't need to get into that. I already made my way. So now I want to do it for the state, it's for the taxpayers. I believe we pay way too much taxes and we ought to pay less tax. And one of the things on my website at stoptax.org, which is on the paper that Jimmy passed out, is that I come up with a plan. I helped get Act 388 done when I, we met at the Capitol with David Thomas, a whole bunch of us, Tim Lutry was in on it, and all that. And they passed Act 388. We tried to raise sales tax, two cents to get all the property tax done away with people. They wouldn't buy it. Uh, the Policy Council and the Chamber of Commerce said, well, we think the students ought to have all the money they want, but we don't, the, the businesses do not have children per se, so the businesses should not pay any property tax and the homeowners should pay every bit of it. That's why they were lobbying the legislature. Well now, you hear the people talking about the sales tax exemptions, you know, the $300 cap on automobiles and all these other exemptions. Well, I figured it out. If we did away with all the exemptions, that means everybody would pay sales tax. You pay it on your grocery, you pay it on your gasoline, you pay it on your electric bill, you pay your sales tax on everything. Well, everybody uses a lot of these things, so everybody would pay the tax. And there's enough money in there to take all the property taxes off of just take them away and shut the tax assessor's offices in the state. If they shut the tax assessor's office, it'd be $20 million a year saved. So if they did that, and there was an issue on all the bonds, and this is all property taxes, county, schools, and city, there was people were talking, well, there's not enough money to pay the bonds. Well, I figured out the bonds. The bonds, there's a tax already on the book on real estate property in our building and when it's sold and the person who buys it has to pay a deed stamp. The deed stamp is three hundred and eight three dollars and eighty five cents per thousand. I want to up it to twenty dollars per thousand. So when you come to buy a piece of property, all these newcomers moving into South Carolina, they're the ones that cause us to have to build more schools, more sheriff, more courthouse and all that. So at most fire departments and police. So when they come in here, let them pay for it. It'd be almost like an impact fee. But since the law is already on the books, it'd be easy to change the amount. A whole lot easier than coming up with a new law. So that's what I intend to do about that. And an example I'm just giving. Everybody fusses about the $300 cap for all of this. I think nobody ought to mess with it. Well, folks, there's a city that you don't pay the county and the county and city tax when you buy an automobile. You pay the six cent state sales tax on an automobile. And say you buy a thirty thousand dollar vehicle, your sales tax instead of three hundred dollars would be eighteen hundred dollars. That's a one-time shot. You never pay for it again. Well, on a $3,000 automobile, if you go to our truck or whatever, you go down to the assessor's office, and this could be over $1,000 to property tax on that vehicle first year. Next year, it'd be 900 and next year, it'd be 800 I've done exceeded $1,800 already. But you pay property taxes on a vehicle. If you keep it forever, you can pay for it forever. I mean, it gets down over a period of 15 years, it gets down to $15, but you still paying for it. If you add all the property tax, what you pay, it's going to be several thousand dollars on a $300,000 vehicle over the life, even if you keep the car 15 years. And so, you know, I can't think, well, there's a lot of things that Talbert and them were talking about that were betting the people running for office. And there's a lot of things on that list I'm for, like sale money and things like that. But there's one thing that I disagree with all the Republicans, I disagree with Jake Knox and anybody else, is on school choice. 
I'm against school choice for two reasons. One reason is that uh, one reason is they will they will take and give certain people our tax money in the form of tax credit to put their kids in private school. Well. My solution is totally eliminate property taxes, and then I would be the school choice. But just in Lexington County alone, I figured out Lexington County, or Richland, or Lexington School District 1, if they pass the, the bill that didn't pass, H4-4894, if they would have passed that bill, how many children are wanting to leave Lexington one to go to Richland one, want to go to Calhoun County, Saluda County, Aiken County, Orangeburg County. Not any, right? I, how many of those different groups do the kids want to come to Lexington one? As many as they could get in these schools. And for each school that uh, e each student that comes here that does not live in the county the state, uh, the, the federal funds to the school would average out $900, a little over $900 per student. The state funds that come out of the state budget to the schools is $5,430. The taxpayers, every one of you that lives in Richmond, Lexington one, would have to pay an additional $4,570 per student out of our money for students coming from other districts that their parents does not even pay the property tax in this county. So that's why I'm against the school choice. But I will be for school choice if they totally eliminate all the property taxes like the plan I have, which I gave to Mac Tool and uh, Todd Atwater last year and they didn't get much anywhere for it. I would push it. And there's, I, I just don't believe that the property tax is the most evil tax ever imposed on man. And I don't think we should have it. Any questions? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of 
That's the way it's going year to year, and, and we don't really have choices. And I can keep it. That's right. But the people keep well, putting well, the, you people in this room, or even, even you and everybody else in this county and state and country, put the same people back in office every time. And they either usually vote Democrat or Republican. Well, I already proved that the Democrats and Republicans, there's no difference. I mean, it don't matter. If, if Obama gets reelected, he's going to take away our guns and all that. If Mitt Romney gets elected, he's not going to repeal Obamacare. He's already did it in Massachusetts. And, and he's not going to repeal the, uh, what was the, the act where they took away our freedom? Yeah, he's not going to repeal that. He's not even probably going to fire half the bar in a bottom of the point. So what's the difference in voting for either one of them? You know, he, everybody's got problems. i got problems. I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. But all these other people do. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay.